All right, I wanted to show you what I was doing here before I did it. <clears throat> this is a three-quarter inch um, concrete form. My dad had some of this laying around. It's pretty straight. Um, I figured I'd just use this since he didn't want it anymore instead of buying a $50 piece of uh, plywood. Um, particle board doesn't work real good on this. Like I said, uh, exotherm or heat will cause it to warp. So. Uh, plywood is the best thing to use. If you can, if you got something with a nice face, the better. You can see here I've got holes. Also, this had a, a, um, a chemical on it called uh, Break Free, which is an oil that helps uh, release the uh, concrete from the board. I had to uh, sand this down a little bit and wipe it down with some acetone. And I'm going to use some Super 90 spray on here. And then I'm going to attach this. This is just a piece of eighth inch um, whiteboard, and it's cut to the same size as that board out there. I'll put uh, Super 90 on the back of this, and then attach it to the, the board out there. And then the, uh, the bike frame will be fastened to it in a similar fashion, maybe more like this. And then I'll fasten that down and Duratec spray it. So. When I get the uh, this fastened down, I'll give you an update. Okay, I've got this uh, tacked down on the, the sheet and then I've put some screws on. You can see some screw holes. So there, there's one up there. And then I put some Bondo in the, the holes. Uh, I just wanted to show you this. This is kind of a cool thing with Bondo. If, you, if it's not set up all the way, you can actually just take a razor and just nicely saw it off. this so uh, there you have it looks like I got a little bubble in my bundle so I'll have to fill that in but uh, just a quick easy trick to show you Okay, so back in the shop and getting ready to do, uh, to prime these things with some Duratec. So let me just show you what I've done. I've gone ahead and masked these off. Um, on this one I've put some paper. But uh, the reason why I masked this off so much is because uh, it's much easier to use the, uh, the malamine or the, the whiteboard that's under here than it is to take the Duratec primer and sand it down smooth and, and gloss and all that. So it's faster to tape it and then rip it off. Uh, that's pretty much ready to, to create the mold on. All I have to do is wax it and, and then you know put your gel coat and, and fiberglass on top of that. So what I'm using here is that Duratec. This is the Gray Easy Sanding Primer. It's got fillers in it. So we need to mix it up well. So I use one of these things um, just to drill with the, with the mixer on it, paint mixer. And that uh, distributes the filler out in there pretty well. This is a polyester paint. Um, so not only does it dry, but it also cures. And those fillers in there fill in your, your pinholes. And it also sands really easy. And you can sand it to a nice, shiny, lustrous gloss. And you're ready to make your female mold parts on top of that. So I'm going to be using some, some just sprayers here. <coughs> Um, compressed air sprayers and uh, I don't remember what my settings are at for this particular product I usually adjust it as I go um, I won't go into that with you guys so you, you can figure that out as you're if you ever want to try this stuff if you don't have a paint sprayer or a compressor um, I have used this before this is a preval sprayer and it actually works pretty well basically you just mix up the paint put it in here and then it sprays out. <clears throat> so uh, if you don't have uh, the sprayers, then use one of those. Uh, I think it's like like 20 bucks or something. And the, the aerosol refills are like um, I think they're like six dollars each. So it's not a bad little unit to use if you don't have other methods to use. Also, just to, just to know, I'll be using um, full body coveralls for this. So I'll be using shoe covers and then a full body um, coverall including the, uh, the head. I'm also using a respirator and some goggles and then nitro gloves on my, on my hands to protect myself. 
Uh, it gets pretty nasty in here. You can imagine sticking your face into some Bondo and taking a deep breath. That's what it would be like if I if I sprayed this in here without protection. So I'm going to use a uh, respirator that's uh, meant for, for volatile um, fumes. So anyway, take your proper safety precautions. I'll show you what this looks like after you get done spraying. All right, went ahead and sprayed these. Um, they revealed a lot of imperfections um, that I missed. So, I don't know if you can see them good here. You can see some little pinholes right there. This over here looks crappy. So, tomorrow, after this sets up, I am going to uh, fill it in with some Rondo and sand it down a little bit. And then spray it probably one more time. All right, so I went ahead and took care of those pinholes, like I was telling you, and resprayed this with Duratec. And uh, it's looking a lot better now. Um, I'm satisfied with it. So now what I'll do is I'll take some, some 320 grit sandpaper and level everything off. And once I've just leveled it, because you don't want to go too deep on it with the, with the 320, um, I'll move up to 400 and then give it a little bit more of a sand, then move up to 600 grit sandpaper. And then once I've done that with 600 grit and I feel satisfied with it, I will take off the tape, smooth out the edges um, so it has a nice transition to that malamine. And then I'll use this. This is Meguiar's uh, oxidation remover. It's specifically made for gel coat on boats. I really like using this stuff because it cuts it down pretty fast and uh, makes a nice uh, polish and makes it really nice and shiny. And then we'll go ahead and get ready to prep for making the female molds off of these. Okay, so I got done sanding this with the 600 grit sandpaper. Now it's time to polish. Um, I think I already told you that I'm using some Meguiar's, you can see it, Meguiar's uh, 49 oxidation remover. like this stuff. I find that I can go 600 grit and then this polishes it nice and smooth. At least as smooth as for what I need. Um, I'm just using a uh, small polisher here for small areas like the bottom bracket shell inside there and up and around the head tube. And then I'll go ahead and take this and, and finish it off. This is a, a 2500 RPM um, polisher. Uh, this works pretty good. So anyway, uh, I will show you what it looks like when I get done. Okay, here's the uh, plug after using the oxidation remover, which is really just a uh, cutting compound. And uh, it turned out pretty good. Uh, it's nice and polished. Uh, now the next step is to wax it. and. Um, I just wanted to show you, these are a couple of the waxes that I've used and I like. first one's a Min Wax Paste Wax, the other one's Meguiar's Mirror Glaze, which is just a Carnuba Wax, and they both work really well. Um, on this here, I'll probably use the, uh, the Paste Wax first off because it fills in some of the, the holes, which I have some, some gaps here between um, the, the wood and the plug um, that need to be filled, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. This is prior to using the, uh, or spraying this off with gel coat. Um, but when I get ready to do that, I'll, I'll fill you in on how I'm going to do that in the process there. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and give this probably three coats of uh, paste wax and then probably two coats of uh, carnauba wax. Okay, I just got done waxing this with two coats of uh, paste wax. Uh, the uh, the paste wax filled in those uh, gaps pretty good, so we're happy about that. Um, the thing that sucks about waxing is when you start waxing, you start to see little imperfections, um, little pinholes, little divots, places that aren't completely level. Um, uh, I'm lucky here, I don't have too many of those, and the ones that I do have, I'll be able to clean them up on the, on the mold when I pull it off. So, happy about that. So, the next step is, is, is putting another coat or two of uh, carnauba wax. I'll just do it on the plug though. I've waxed the, uh, the malamine or the whiteboard here, so that's good enough. Um, but I will probably give the plug one or two coats of, of carnauba wax. And then we'll put uh, some PVA down, which is polyvinyl alcohol. And that'll be a, a releasing agent. Then we'll spray this off with some black tooling gel coat and then put our fiberglass and uh, isothalic polyester resin on. So I'll save that project for tomorrow. So just wanted to give you an update and show you how this looks. You can see nice and shiny. 
other side as well. So it's looking good. Feeling good about this one. We'll see how it goes though, you never know. I gave this uh, plug another coat of uh, Carnuba Wax. Um, and I probably should have mentioned this. The reason why I like Carnuba Wax over the Paste Wax, if you're wondering why I didn't just hit it with Paste Wax again, Carnuba Wax I think is easier to work with. Um, it's easier to rub on, polish, and, and rub off than the Paste Wax. Pa paste Wax, it's really thick. So when it dries, it gets, um, it gets hard to take off. So anyway, that's why I use the Carnuba Wax if I can. Um, the next step that we did here is use some PVA on this. It's a relacing agent um, that you use between the, uh, the wax and the uh, gel coat that we're going to use. Um, PVA stands for polyvinyl alcohol. Basically it's uh, plastic and alcohol that's been melted. Once the alcohol um, dries, uh, it leaves the uh, plastic film behind and it's also water soluble so you can you can wash it off later if you need to. Basically you just take a rag, um, put the PVA on it, I just wipe it down. I know some people spray, I always have problems spraying um, so I just like to wipe it down good. Um, I don't know if you can see inside there. See how there's still a little bit of green, it hasn't quite dried all the way. So I'm going to let that dry. And then I'm going to spray this down with some black tooling gel coat. Um, it's pretty warm today, but I'll probably still want a hot batch. So I'll mix it probably 2-3% catalyst. And then I'll use a uh, sprayer, just like we did with the Dur Duratec. And I'll spray this off. And then I'll let that cure and, and we'll get all of our stuff ready um, for the, uh, the fiberglass part.